Hello, welcome to Telecom TV. My name is Tony Chan, and today with me is Ms. Deng from China Mobile. She's responsible for one of the projects for NFB uh, within China Mobile. Ms. Deng, can you talk a little bit about the key success factors for commercial deployments of NFB, and how does the open source community facilitate that? Thank you, Tony. Uh, it is my pleasure of being here. Uh, I'm actually, I'm pro project manager at China Mobile Research Institute, and I'm um, one of the core members of the NovaNet uh, trial. Uh, I'm sorry, NovaNet project in China Mobile, which is actually you know responsible for all the strategic planning, trials, and also you know like research, um, development, uh, all that efforts in for China Mobile. And um, as you for the quest first question. I think uh, from our years of trials and research and development, we feel that um, there are two important things for NFV deployment. And the first thing is that we we actually lacking of you know like efficient standardization uh, standard interfaces, which we first turn to standards um, bodies, for example, SNFV for help. And um, you know, after years of, um, of efforts, uh, actually also we see that major carriers also launched a lot of open source communities. For example, OpenV being the first one, and then um, OpenO and and then ONAP. What we were trying to do is actually to build a open architecture, uh, which is to be proved by running code and use. It as de facto standards for different components of this huge NFV architecture to be decomposed with interoperable modules and is tested, verified, and can be worked together and in our NFV deployment. And I think the second you know, important factor for the commercial deployment is, is actually we have to do interoperability testing in an automatic -like manner. Because um, you know, traditionally we buy devices from I don't know four or five major vendors to congest our network, but things would change. As you can see from the architecture reference picture, the picture we have like um, ten or um, or more components that are supposed to be interworking with each other. So before all those components, all those different vendors, software, hardware integrator coming to our lab to do this interoperability testing, we want, you know, some, we can have some reference, um, you know, implementation. And also we need some automatic tooling framework to do it, you know, for at least the lower bar before they can actually enter to, to our labs to do it. And that is what OPNV has been offering us. And we, we have been using it in our labs for, for our trial. And it is, it is very helpful, I would okay. say. Um, s since the founding of uh, OPNV, uh, I think it's been three years. Um, since then, there's been a lot of uh, different projects and, and initiatives, even within the open source community. You mentioned some of them, OpenO, for example, and, yeah. and, and uh, ONAP. Um, how do you consolidate, how do you manage all the, all the different projects? And do you, see, you know, are you making an effort to harmonize them together as one, or is that a challenge for you? Um, actually, I, I would say um, we, are, we are actually at the learning curve. We, we, we as carriers are new to open source. Um, but luckily, uh, we have a unified team for both OPNV and OpenO and now ONAP. So uh, we actually, internally, we're one team. And we see those different communities, actually, they're, they can be complementary to right. each other. The only problem that I see is that I cannot personally involved in all you know, various events if they are not collocated. So for us, we would want you know, to prefer that perhaps we can have more co-located uh, co events so that we don't have to be physically you know, travel too much. And it would be great if you know, more and more participants would you know, have unified internal teams working on those different open source efforts because those are supposed to be complementary and collaborating with each other. If we have unified team internally, it would 
ultimately be beneficial to for us to to try to harmonize those communities. Right. right. Okay. Um, let's talk a little bit about security, Sorry. Uh, because um, within a carrier environment, obviously everything has to work carrier grade, and um, I guess a failure is not really a, an option. Um, and s security is the main component of that. Um, how do you see security, you know, getting integrated into the open source community? Yeah, I think this is a very good question. So, um, for open source, I don't think that you know, it's meant to first of all to prove the functionality of, of different like uh, you know contributions from from. Um, it's not meant to be you know addressing uh, a lot of like uh, commercial requirements. Being some some of them, I think you know, security issues always come at last. People would complain about that, but I think. Uh, after years of trials and also we actually some of the carriers are actually considering deploy NFB and we are among them so security is, um, is actually needs to be added to the picture and um, starting from this year I think in next month or so um, in our third phase of our NFB trial for core, core network we are officially adding a security like working group to add those like specifications and test suites that we would like to to use in our trials and later on in our procurement testing and also specifications. So security is uh, critical and it needs to be integrated. I guess 5G must be the hottest topic in the industry right now and as the, as the world's biggest operator um, and probably with the biggest network. H how do you see um, open source and I guess network virtualization uh, to a certain extent, um, how would it fit into the 5G architecture that you envision? Well, um, what we have been investing in open source, literally OPNV and ONAP, we're actually looking at the common infrastructure uh, both at the cloud management level and also at the service and resource orchestration level. So all of those, I think, open source platforms or um, actually should be application agnostic. You, you know what I mean? So 5G would be yet another application. And perhaps, you know, it has the potential to be the first, I think, commercial ones um, for cloud native applications. So. Um, we would, you know, prefer, I, I think, um, at least from my personal ex um, point of view, is that we wanted to invest more in the common platform capabilities so that we can support whatever applications as they come. Right. I'm assuming that China Mobile has a schedule to, to launch NAV commercially, or have you launched already? Uh, not yet. Uh, um, it is very likely that we will um, launch, I think, by the end of this year or the beginning of next year. Lastly, can you talk a little bit about the, the Chinese uh, market or environment for open source? I mean, it seems that there's a lot of support within China for open source. Uh, is, is that the case? Do you notice any difference between China and perhaps maybe overseas? Even in China, um, our internet giants um, actually you know, they are followers of the open source software. And we as carriers, we are also, you know, participating in this journey, I think, for NFV. And so it seems to me that, you know, especially our society is also, you know, and, and the government is also advocating this open source for Internet Plus. And um, those are very good and like, um, you know, encouragement for us to, you know, to embrace open source. Thank you very much, Ms. Deng, for joining us today. It is my pleasure. Thank you, Tony.